There's two words that come to us from the ancients that I think we should remind ourselves of, repeat to ourselves in any and every situation we're in. You win the lottery, you strike it rich, you get recognized, you get an award, you say to yourself, memento mori, remember you will die. You go through shit, you go through trouble. Someone cheats on you, someone betrays you, someone lies to you, someone steals from you, someone gets what you earned, someone gets promoted over you, you say to yourself, memento mori, remember that I will die. You could leave life right now, Marcus Aurelius said. Let that determine what you do and say and think. You get in a fight with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, your parents say something mean or let you down, your neighbor pisses you off, you break your leg, you blow out your knee, you fall out of love with someone, you're stressed out by work, your kids are sick. You say to yourself, memento mori, life is short, I'm going to die. And what that means is you can't take any of this seriously. You can't let it weigh on you. You can't hold on to it. You can't let it puff you up either. If you're rich, if you're famous, if you have a million Instagram followers, you just got hired, you just got into Harvard, you just got nominated for a Nobel Prize, you just got a call from the president, you just got a promotion, you just got a raise. Memento mori, you will die. You can't take any of this with you. It pales in comparison to the idea of eternity. How many people have come before you and had these same honors and where are they now? They're fucking dead, just like you will be. What Marcus really said is this, practice of memento mori, of saying to the good things and to the bad things in life that we will die. It's a reminder that helps you accept the good things without arrogance and to let the bad things go with indifference. Your plane is delayed, you're stressed, you're tired, you're hungry, you're frustrated, you're cynical. You say, memento mori, I'm going to die. What does any of this mean? Why am I taking any of it so seriously? Why am I letting it get to me? What's three hours here or three hours there? Remember, you are going to die. What you do control is whether you waste time getting upset by this, whether you waste time taking it personally, whether you're the best in the world at what you do or you're an unpaid intern, whether your work is being beloved by the critics or savaged by the critics, whether you have more opportunities than you know what to do with, whether you can't get the one shot, no one will even give you a chance, whether you have all the money you need or you can barely get by, you say, memento mori, remember I will die. None of this matters in light of that. Whether you're having sex with a beautiful supermodel, whether you're putting your kid down to bed, whether you're sitting there in your pajamas eating cereal or you are standing in front of a prestigious audience. Memento mori, you will die. Is this how you want to spend your time? Are you wasting it or are you living it? Are you embracing it or are you letting it escape from your grasp? Memento mori, remember I will die. You could leave life right now, let that determine what you do and say and think. Whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're going through, however awesome your life is, however frustrating it is right now, Memento mori, remember you will die. This too shall pass. You must not forget that. Hey, it's Ryan Holiday. Thank you so much for supporting Daily Stoic. It means a lot and it helps us when you like and subscribe and comment on our videos. When you follow us on social media, we're at Daily Stoic on pretty much every platform. You can also check out dailystoic.com slash store. That's how we keep these videos high quality and ad free. If you want to support us, buy one of our awesome philosophically inspired products. Thank you for all the support. So the, the memento mori thing has been like of an unexpected vein because uh, for myself too. Explain I, uh, to people what that is. So for... memento mori is, is this idea. It just means remember death or remember your immortality. And I think it's probably, it's, it's not only one of the most powerful themes in all of ancient philosophy, specifically Stoicism, but in basically all of ancient art as well. Like the most beautiful painting. Painters used to paint pictures of skulls and dancing skeletons and, and or, or decaying bodies. And, and, and so this imagery of the, de the inevitable decay, the entropy of life, 
is this timeless theme that basically goes all the way up to modern art and then it's just like weird ass shapes and stuff. <laughs> we like so we stopped using art as a tool to remind us of human primal things and started mm. using it as a status symbol. You know what I mean? And and so what the Stoics are so much of meditations and uh, and and Seneca's writing is is just talking about how easy it is to rem- to forget that you'll die or to have the wrong attitude about die like death. One of my favorite things from Seneca, he goes like, "Do not think that you're moving towards death." He was like, "Every second that passes is death." So don't think about it as like, "Oh, I'm dying in the future and I should be prepared for that." Think about the fact that we're dying every day. Um, that you're just why is that better it, it's just a reminder it's not like death is this thing in the future so i'm gonna dick around today it's right. that like the that hour that i spent forever. on the couch i died one hour of my death mm. do you know what i mean yeah and, and his point is that so many people think that there's life and death but there are ways of living that are essentially a form of being dead mm. and that this is in fact how most people die uh or most people live uh there's this um sort of haunting, messed up uh, story in Seneca. One of the emperors is sort of like walking down this row of, of, you know, condemned prisoners and the prisoner is pleading for his life, please don't kill me. And the emperor looks at him and he thinks, and he's like, you think you're alive? You know, because this man's horrible way of living was already death, you know? And, and so that just, I think it so resonates with people um, because it's so the opposite of, of, of how modern life is set up. Uh, people die in hospitals far from mm-hmm. our house. Uh, who spends time with old people? We are so segregated even by age, right? Um, there's been so many medical advancements that death doesn't feel random. It feels like it's something your fault. That, like if you eat healthy and you're a good person, obviously you'll live a long time. And on average you will, but that doesn't mean that uh, non-smokers don't get lung cancer mm. all the fucking time. And you can't be one of those people. That doesn't mean that people uh, don't get hit with tree branches, you know, and die. Or uh, that doesn't mean that countries don't go to war for no reason. And lots of people, you know, mm. like life is tragic and it always has been for all of human history. And so that's that's definitely, I think, the most powerful one. And it's something I, I mean, I keep on my desk. I mean, so I wear this ring. It's like a reminder. But I have... Uh, I bought it on 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 uh, online. It's uh, a chunk of a tombstone, and it ju- like from some I don't know how this came to be. I, I hope nobody stole it, but it's from like an old Victorian grave, so a couple oh. hundred years old, and it just uh, it it just has the word dad on it. And it, so that's so fucking interesting. Yeah. Like I want to start asking people what is some weird shit that they have yeah. that that is so interesting, especially knowing your views on death and being a dad recently. Yeah. And, and so it's like, look, crazy. I'm, this guy was a father. Did you seek out the word dad? I was looking for something like that. And when I found it and I was like, that's that's it. That's the reminder that I want to have all the time. Fuck. That one really hit me. I'm not sure why. Yeah. The the word dad that it's an actual tombstone. Because I'm it's a, a father, because you, what you're thinking about is what that person meant to yes, other people. Yes, yes. And and that this is something clearly people identify he, he that was part of his identity and he's not here. And not only is he not here, I don't even fucking know his name. Right. Nobody does. Not only does nobody know his name, but at some point after his death even the ground he was buried in, like suffered an earthquake or right. <laughs> somebody stole it. Like, so it's just, there's a humility in that. And I think a reminder to be present, right? Like, um, so when my, let's say I'm working at my desk and I'm writing and my son is almost three, he comes running and he's like, dad, dad, look at this. <laughs> you know, it, that's like, a, am going to get this writing done because I'm important or it's important to me. But I am not going to ignore this thing. Mm. Uh, I'm going to. I'm not saying I'm going to quit my work and not focus on it at all. But I am not going to ignore this moment to be this thing that's important to me. Do you know what I mean? So I, I have an evolving sense of what my relationship to death should be. So for a very long time, um, it was patently obvious to me that I was going to die, but yeah. that we're living in a period where. 
it is conceivable that we'll be able to hit escape velocity from a health perspective and that by the time we're 80, 90, if we're able to live that long, that they can add a year and a day to every yeah. year that we live or yeah. whatever. So or you just live a lot longer than humans have conceived of life as being. Correct. So I thought, okay, that's interesting to me because um, I want to live my life in such a way where my limited amount of time does not impact the size of my dreams. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a denial of death. It was just kind of a cool escape valve for me to, even as I got older, to continue to have big dreams that, you know, sort of by any stretch of the imagination would probably go on beyond me. But because tomorrow was never guaranteed anyway, even yeah. when I was 16, yeah. that there's only that the the sort of false or maybe a better way to think of it is um, from a, an actuarial table standpoint, you're probably going to live long enough for you to have that 40 year dream or yeah. that six year dream or whatever. So because of that, you just, you do, you have yeah. these long ranging dreams. And I felt like because I had long ranging dreams, I was able to do some pretty extraordinary of things, course, but only because I was thinking so long-term. So, okay, as I get older, I don't want to stop having these long-term dreams. Yeah. So I really allowed myself to soak in the notion of, hey, you might live forever. So keep having these big long range yeah. dreams. Now, hearing enough people talk about Memento Mori or whatever, I started thinking, all right, people that I really respect are telling me that I need to really think closely about the notion of dying. Yeah. So I thought, okay, let me really stop and inspect how that would impact me. What does that change in terms of the way that I live or um, how I perceive life or whatever? And so far, I will say, because I'm already like, it is it is at the absolute core of my being to only do things that matter, to love deeply, to connect to the people that I love, to not waste time, all that. Like I don't, yeah. I personally don't need that reminder. Yeah. Many people do and, and it's very useful sure. for that. That isn't the reminder that I need. I find that it's actually, it, it feels important to acknowledge the inevitability currently of my death. But at the same time, I find that now I have to fight harder to have long range plans. And I don't like the way that feels. So I, it, it is, it's, it's seemingly there's a contradiction between being present and doing or planning big things, but I'm not sure that there is, I don't know exactly how to solve for it, but let's look at the evidence, right? Marcus Aurelius, here's a guy, he's reminding himself of how ephemeral the emperors who came before him were. He's reminding himself of the inevitability of death. Uh, he's saying over and over again the importance of being present, not being driven by anger. We can't say like that it that this guy didn't accomplish incredible things, right? Like that he that because of that he just stayed in bed all day. I think what he's saying is like let's do the right thing for the right reason. You look at Seneca, same thing, talking over and over again about the death, about the import uh, the, the inevitability of death, the meaninglessness of uh posthumous fame, etc. And yet still sits down and writes these essays that continue to be read by millions of people 2,000 plus years after his death. I think what it's about is about stripping out the, the low-grade anxiety or denial or whatever we have and, and being able to focus everything in that, that moment. So when, when Seneca is saying like, you will die, today could be the last day of your life, he's not saying quit what you're doing and go have an orgy or go shoot up heroin just to see what it's like. He's saying, live today like a complete day. So like what, as I worked on Stillness is the Key, it was something I was thinking about a lot. I was like, okay, I could die before this book gets published. What happens to me, it, does someone finish it? Does it get published, whatever? Does it sit in a drawer? None of that's really my concern. What? Nor is it in my control, right? Even if I write in a will exactly. Nabokov, I, I think, wrote very clearly like, destroy my manuscripts after my death. Really? Yeah. And lots of authors have done this. And nobody listened. You know, <laughs> Kafka, same thing. We only know about these works because they're, they, they would be upset that we know who they are. Right. So what do I control? What I do control is, did I do everything I could today? Right? Did I leave, like, is the book complete as of today? Do you know what I mean? Like, is it as complete up until the point I was able to complete it? Mm. So I go, you know, the first two thirds are the book that it could be as of today. That's what I do. Does that make sense? It does, but I don't know that it hits me emotionally. So sure. um, let's try to unpack that a little bit. So 
if you're saying like, hey, I'm going to do my best and I'm going to be present, which we actually didn't address. And I don't think is a self-evident realization when one thinks about their death, uh, which would be interesting to hear your thoughts around why that is your association. Um, I I begin to, to think about. Um, so if I were writing a book, first of all, I'm such a process writer that I would be the, the type that's like, bury the fucking manuscript. Yeah, like, don't yeah, ever let it out. Yeah. People would have no, like they yeah. just wouldn't believe how scandalously bad my early drafts of sure. anything are. Um, so I, I wouldn't think of it in any other way than the following. Did I sincerely pursue making this great today? Yes or no? That's what that, I totally agree with. That's what it's about. He's, okay. he's saying like, live every day as a complete day. And then when you wake up tomorrow, you're grateful because you get a second day. I got you the coin last time, but I thought, I, know. You, I thought you'd like this. This is, this is what I wear. It's a signet ring. It's the same thing. Memento Mori, your favorite words. Remember, you will die. I know you're into the stoicism stuff a little bit. And I know you wouldn't just wear anything. So I had this made for you. Wow. Oh, shit. Look at that. Memento Mori. This is a, this is a ring I wear, but I think you'd like it. Wow. That's amazing. I appreciate that so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love this about you. I got one for you too. Memento uh, Mori. Memento Mori, right? So we're talking about like, where am I rushing towards? Mm -hmm. What we're rushing towards is death, right? We all die. Ooh. So let's slow it <laughs> Let's slow it down. I don't need to get through this interview right. to go on to the next one. I don't need to get my chain. Like mm. every moment is a moment. Time is valuable. Yeah. One of the, one of the quotes that changed my life, uh, Seneca, he said like, death is not in the future death is right now every second that passes belongs to death right mm. like so as things are passing as you're rushing through life because you think you're dying like we're dying we're dying so we'll stop looking forward to the weekend <laughs> right no look forward to <laughs> look right. forward to enjoying this whatever it is uh -huh. even if it's stuck in traffic even if it's uh bad weather it's like because this is it and it might be this literally might be it it could be the last thing Live every Absolutely. moment like it's your last baby that's why yeah. i say all the time people be rushing like are you in a rush to die why are you speeding for exactly you know what i'm saying what are you walking fast towards like what's the point yeah like slow down slow down enjoy it make the most of it and be be present thanks for watching please subscribe below for more content from daily stoic